أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيتها الأخوة أيها الأخوة أحييكم بتحية الإسلام تحية من عند الله مباركة طيبة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm very happy to be here. It's the first visit to uh, uh, Maldives uh, and I, I was uh, visiting many countries around but this is the first time I'm coming here. Inshallah, not the last time. And uh, I met many of your uh, uh, citizens around the world in Malaysia, in other countries because uh, you are traveling a lot and and as i have seen during over the last uh, two days that many of you visited egypt my country of origin um so uh i think that before everything it's uh, uh, a relationship based on uh, uh, our islamic belonging and the fact that uh, we are uh referring to the same principles let me tell you something about uh uh, the the title and and the way I want to 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 tackle the issue, speaking from the heart and also as it is said here, it's a, a reflection from the heart. Um, very often when we speak like this as Muslims, we are referring to uh, trends within Islam. One of these trends is when we speak about the heart, we are speaking about the mystical trend, we are speaking about Sufism, and very often in the West, this is the way they are talking about the other Islam, which is the mystical trend. And uh, my point here is to say we have to be very cautious with this way of talking about Islam, because in fact, when we speak and we come back to the heart of Islam, speaking about the heart, this is not a trend among the trends. This is the very essence of our religion. So I would say that reflection from the heart is in fact a journey which is bringing us back to the essence of Islam. That everything in Islam has to do with the heart. Everything that even when we heard the Quran right now is Allah is talking to your minds. In fact, the, the very essence of this message is to touch and to reach your heart. Everything should change from here. And this is where, once again, we have uh, to understand the whole message of Islam. There is one verse in the Quran which is quite clear. We always say and we repeat, There is in the Prophet the best example for you. And Allah SWT, uh, Azza wa Jal is saying when he's coming to this, if you want to follow the Prophet ﷺ, there is a very specific relationship that you need to get with Allah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Say, if you love God, follow me. Say you, you have to tell the people, you have to tell the companions, you have to tell the tabi'een, you have to tell the Muslims around the world, if you love God, follow me. And if you follow me, Allah will love you which is once again something which is bringing us back to what is the very meaning of our religion. It's a relationship which is now what you have to assess is not only how much and how far you go in implementing the formal teachings of Islam, but in which way everything that you are doing is based on your understanding, based on your love and the very essence of coming close to God with your heart, not only with your mind. Not only with your mind. Islam is not uh, an intellectual religion only. It is never against intellect and always based on your heart. And the very essence of Islam is reconciling your heart with your mind and your mind with your heart. That's the very difficult thing to do is how you can get this uh, um, um, this uh, relationship to the point that Allah SWT is saying in Hadith Qudsi uh, that everything that we have to do through the uh, al-fara'id so what he commanded us to do why do we read the Quran 
Why do you uh, try to understand the hadith? Why are you praying five times a day? Why are we fasting? Why are we trying to, to, are we giving the zakat? Why are we doing all this? What is the point of all doing all this? And then why do we add nawafil in the way we are praying? Not only we have to pray five times a day, but we need to add, and during Ramadan, for example, we added tarawih during the night. Why? Why are we doing this, all this? لا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي يتقرب means we are trying to come close to him حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته so this is where it's something which is essential we are doing all this to the point that we want to be loved by him because at the end of the day it's true that we don't want to end up in hellfire it's true that what we want is paradise but the most important thing is do we want to be close to him do we want to understand and do we, are we trying to understand that the highest level of us trying to obey, trying to follow the Qur'an, قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We have heard and we obey. In order to do what? Just to say, I obeyed and I want paradise? No, what we want, which is exactly what we got in the Qur'an, is to be loved by Him. And to be loved by him means that beyond the formal dimension of our religion, there is something which is deeper than that, which uh, is to come back to the essence of our religion. In fact, all what I said right now is for us to come back. And this is where Islam is not only about fiqh in the way law and Islamic jurisprudence. That's the formal side. This is very important. Al-halal, halal, wal haram, haram. What is lawful, it's lawful, and what is uh, uh, unlawful is unlawful. But this is the formal side. We have to obey, to abide by the law, but we also have to come back to the very essence. And to do this, we have to understand what Islam is saying about the concept of human being. What does it mean to be a human being? And this is where we understand in the Quran, وَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينَ حَنِيفَةً فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا So stand up as somebody who is coming to the essence of your religion, فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ which is the natural aspiration that Allah put in every one of us. Not only us Muslims, but every human being. Every human being has in his or her heart a spark, which is a natural aspiration. The revelations are coming just to this light, and it's light. And you know that one of the names of the Qur'an is a nur, light. Coming to what? Your light. So this is where you have in the Qur'an, nurun ala nur. The revelation is coming as a nur to touch the nur that you have in your heart. But to do this, you have to understand the fitrah. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ So one day nothing is going to have value. Neither your kids nor your money. Nothing except the one who will come to Allah. بقلب سليم means what? القلب السليم in Arabic سليم means in its natural origin and state. A سليم which is not distorted, which is not perverted. So you have to come back to this. Al-Qalb is Salim. So for us Muslims, when we talk about this, it's how in our education, in our way of educating our kids, our children, our students, and ourselves, we try to come back to Al-Fitra, Al-Qalb is Salim, the natural dimension, which is Al-Qalb is Salim. So Allah SWT is telling us everything in what you are doing has to do with your heart. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was turning to Allah SWT, he said, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik, wa la takilna ila anfusina tarfat ayn. Allah SWT, said, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, O oh, you who are turning our hearts in one way or another, just help us to be firm in our religion. Why? Because it might be that today you are a good Muslim and today, tomorrow, it can be something else. But that's not this. That's not only this. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik means, you know sometimes when you are praying, you feel that you are close to Allah, you feel that this is happening, there is something special, this is thabbit qulubana ala deenik. It's not only the formal thing, it's the deep understanding of my relationship to Allah. This is what we have to try to get. 
So as Muslims, when we talk about this, when we talk about this dimension, is to ask ourselves in which way we have to deal with this. So when we come to the Quran and when we come to this Al-Qalb Al-Salim, you understand that Al-Quran al kareem just what we heard right now, is telling you the revelation is coming with a message, which means a mission, which means a direction. And then you have to, to, to understand what is the final goal of this life. Why are you here? And the Prophet told us that one day we are going to be millions. And I can tell you something. If you think that we are winning because of numbers, you are completely wrong. It's not a question of being how many Muslims are on earth, but what is the quality of these Muslims? How are they Muslims? One day you will be millions, but you will not count as anything. Why? Because you might be formerly Muslim, Muslims by name, but you are attracted by this world and far from the very understanding. Hubbid dunya wa karahiyat al maut. That one day you are going to be so, so many, but much more attracted by the world than attracted by the very. Karahiyat il maut mean what? It's just not that you reject death. Is that you are so attracted that you are forgetting Allah. So by forgetting him, you are scared of dying. You like love. Which is exactly what you find in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la takunu kalladheena nasullah fa ansahum anfusahum. Don't be like those who are forgetting Allah. They are forgetting themselves. And what does it mean forgetting yourself? You love this world. You are scared of dying. Why? Because dying means that you are losing what you love. Not understanding that you go back to the one you love. So where is your love? Where is your heart? Where is the direction? You know the very difference in this? When you listen to the Quran, when you listen to this verse, from wherever you, you, wherever you are, turn your face towards Al Masjid Al Haram, you have two ways of understanding this verse. One is, I turn my face Al Qibla and I pray. Allah is not only saying this, from wherever you are, turn your face means turn your heart towards the direction. The revelation is not only a formal thing. So when you are looking for the Qibla, it's not only your face, it's your heart. And by your heart is your life. Turn your life towards Al Masjid Al Haram. Meaning the meaning, the meaning, the center. Allah la ilaha illahu. So this is coming from where? It's coming from a deep understanding that when we pray, when we give zakat, whatever we do is something which has to do with the very essence of the meaning, the, the, the goal of our life. That is also something which is part of our teaching as Muslim. So knowing this, how? How are you going to help me to turn my face, to turn my heart, to turn my life? towards the very meaning of this life. Allah SWT, when he is starting to talk, and this is from the Arabic, also something which is important. Allah, when he comes to the Prophet the first thing that he is telling him in Surah 96, when he, he came to him to turn everything, to change everything, to convert his heart, to convert his life, to convert the very essence of his life, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق read and the starting point of your conversion is read is listen and now you read but not on باسم ربك he said three times I cannot read and then when he said باسم ربك in the name of your رب it's الرب it's what we translate in, in English the Lord, but if you come to the root, al Mazdar in Arabic, there is something which has to do with the terbiya, the educator. The educator. There is no way to come to your heart if you don't understand that the way from you to yourself, from your heart to your heart, is through education. Any country, 
any community, any whatever, Tariqa Sufiya, it could be a Sufi circle, it could be a, 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 an institution, a university, which is not understanding that the journey from your heart to your heart is based on education, which is central. Allah was the educator of the Prophet, and we should be our own educator. And every institution, every institution on earth, based on Islamic principles, should do with this in which way we have to deal with it and there is something here which is important because when you are sitting here we all agree yes of course education it's important but what do we know with education why for example ibn qayyim al jawziya when he speaks about the features and the qualities of mujtahid is saying not only the mujtahid should know the texts ahkam in nusus al ahkam so when you have in the Quran the rules, the rulings, he should know. He's a, he's going to be a mufti. He's going to give a fatwa, but he's adding halat nas. He should know about the way people are living. He should know about the context. An education is always an adapted education. You take the principles. What tanzil al waqia means that you have to translate this into a specific reality. So. Your education in Maldives is not going to be the same as the education in Saudi Arabia or in Egypt or in Switzerland. No, it's not going to be the same. You need to go, you need to get the very specific cultural environment and knowing how the people are living, how this collective psychology. It doesn't mean that you have to adapt everything. No, you keep the principles and you translate into the cultural environment what and the way they should be implemented the principles are immutable the translation is contextual this is education so now 20 let's say 50 years ago you were in an island maybe disconnected from what was happening around the world but with the current technology global uh, communication your islands are no longer islands. Everything is there. And by the way, not only everything is there because you have international communication and everything is there, because you have tourism. This is what is helping this country to survive. But this is where we need to understand that you can't keep the same education you had 50 years ago with what is happening today around the world. And because now we are challenged by all this world culture questioning our understanding, questioning our way of practicing Islam, questioning our identity, we need much more education because we have much more challenge ahead. And our children should be equipped. It's not going to be only an intellectual response. It's going to be connected to very meaning. What I, when I say reflection from the heart, it means reflection from the center of our understanding of Islam. You know what we need now? We need much more ordinary, knowledgeable Muslims. Ordinary, knowledgeable Muslims. Stop being followers, expecting from the ulama to give the answer while we are accepting our own ignorance about Islam. Our ignorance are only the formal way of dealing with our principles. Yes, I pray five times a day. I fast during Ramadan. And so what? Is this the way you can do this and not at all understanding your religion in a very superficial way? And one day you have kids and they come to you and say, what about this? What about that? And you are not able to answer. That's the end of our way of understanding. So the reflection, you know how Allah in the Quran is talking about the people who don't understand, who are rejecting Islam. They have heart. They don't understand with the heart. Meaning they are blind. Why? They are blind because the truth is in front of them, but they don't see it. Look at everything in the Quran is connecting your face to your heart. It's not your eyes that we are becoming blind. It's your heart. But your heart means what? Only to speak about uh, peace and love? No. Heart means you have to educate yourself. 
The only way you keep the heart alive is but your understanding with your mind. When you understand with your mind, the heart is alive. But it's only formal with your mind, the heart is becoming dead. You repeat the words, you don't get the light. I repeat. You repeat the words, Al-Quran, you don't get the light. Allah is sending us nur. And with nur, he's sending furqan. Furqan which the discernment, that you can see what is right and what is wrong. So with all this, when we speak about education and we try to, uh, uh, to, to, to get the very important dimension, let us try to translate this into practical terms, into practical things in our life. And it means for every one of us, how much time are we dedicating to get a better understanding of Islam? You know, our religion, there is nothing against rationalism or the, the, the intellect in Islam. So this is why when it comes to our life, we need to get this uh, understanding that uh, nothing is against rationalism, but not everything is rational. Or not everything is under the authority of the rational dimension. When you look at the world, and especially here, why do you think that the people are coming to your islands? They are coming for fun and they are going for tourism. But so many are taking pictures of what? They are taking, and I came here, I was taking pictures of what? Nature and the beauty of nature. What do you say when you look at the beauty of nature? What is the first thing that Allah reconnect the Prophet ﷺ with it? What was it? It was with nature. It was all about this. And one, one night he was, he was crying. And I promised to myself that in every single book I was going to write, this verse was going to be in, in, in the book, within the book. What does it mean? It's that in the creation of the even and earth, in the alternation and night and day, there are signs for those who are full of insight. Full of insight, they see things with their eyes and their heart. And the Prophet ﷺ was crying when he got that. He was not crying because of punishment. He was not crying because of uh, transgression. He was, crying. he was crying because Allah was telling him, Look around you, there are signs and you don't see them. Look around you, I'm here. I'm, I'm in these signs. Al Ayat. So I, I would say here that in, uh, and especially in, uh, in the world today, where we are, too, we are eating fast, we are driving fast, we don't have time to ponder over things. When we are, and at least for you as Muslims, when you are in this uh, environment, it's very important, this reconnection, reconciliation between your heart and nature. Because the way you look at nature is the way you are expecting and hoping Allah's presence in your life. Tell me how you look at nature, I will see the way you are with God. That's as simple as that. And the starting point of the revelation. You know the last surah in the Quran, the last chapter, everything is there. And we think because it's short, it has no meaning. No, it's not because it's short that the meaning is not there. It was short because it was the beginning. But it was short and deep. Our life today is making it short and fast. So the way we pray is short and fast. While it should be short and deep. Deep in reflection. Deep in pondering and contemplation in the way we, we deal with it. So when we start talking about from the heart, there is something here which uh, is very important in our religion. And, and this is the way I want to translate this in the second part into our practical life, in our daily life. When we speak from the heart, we are speaking about two things that I just mentioned now. It's to understand and to love. To understand is the way we should 
look at the revelation and understand what Allah is expecting from us. Allah, what He is expecting from us is to look at the world as a gift. You know when you pray, the supplication that you are adding in your five prayers, in fact, to supplicate, the, the, the supplication are a way to thank Him. To say thank you for what? I'm alive and I have many things that you gave me. And it means here to always start to be positive. Always with Allah, start thinking about what He gave you before what is missing. Always. The reflection of the heart is, I thank you, whatever. And when something is happening, what do we say? When something bad is happening, what do we say? Alhamdulillah. When something good is happening, Alhamdulillah. When something bad is happening, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Whatever is happening, praise be to Allah. Praise be to God. So we have to be positive in the way we are with our life. And this is why we are talking about this love towards Allah. Being positive. Being positive, it's the way the Prophet ﷺ was looking at the situation. Just remember, he came, he got the message as a revelation. The people he loved started to be against him. His own tribe, his own uh, uh, people from his own family, people who were the father of the, his son-in-law, they start to be the first to reject him. And then he had to leave Mecca, and then he had to fight from Medina, and then he saw many of his companions being killed. This is the challenge. And he came with which message? He came with a message of love and peace. Ifshu Salam, this is what he said, Ifshu Salam, spread peace, and he had people attacking him. Knowing that the very moment Waraka ibn Nawfal told him this from the very beginning, you came with the truth, you are going to be attacked. But it, de it did not prevent him in any situation to spread around with all the people who were following his message. This is a message of love. It's not a message of violence. It's not a message of uh, rejection. It's a message of, Ya Ayyuhannas, oh you people come to me. Come to the message, come to the truth. It has to do with this first. But to do this, to keep this love, this is why we need to understand that it's all about understanding. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was saying, you know, in the way we were uh, learning the Quran, we were learning 10 verses and we, need, we did not start learning 10 other verses before understanding the verses. Now we are very happy to have Hufaz al-Qur'an. That's good to have Hufaz. They know the Qur'an by heart. But my own teacher in Egypt, he told me, I learned the Qur'an by heart, but now I'm, going to, I'm now trying again to learn the Qur'an with my heart. Meaning I know everything and many, they can recite the Qur'an, but they don't understand the very meaning. It's good to have Hufaz. It's very important to have Hufaz and we have Muslims understanding what, what we are talking about. Understanding the Quran. So you and many of you, you may, might uh, uh, read Arabic, understand Arabic. But we, what you have to do is not only to be happy to know many verses in Arabic. At the end of the day, what is very important is how many verses do you understand? What do you understand from the verse? So it's better to know less, but to know deeper. Better. And not to be, you know, people who are, don't transform Islam into a capitalist business. It's not about quantity. It's about the meaning of everything that we get. So, when we have Hufaz, the best advice I can give to Hufaz who know the Qur'an by heart, it's now to understand the Qur'an through the heart and through the mind, to take the verses and to try to understand what it meant. And today, even in your language, even in English, now we have translations, you can get a deep understanding. So we need to come to this.
and people did this you know muhammad asad muhammad asad was a, a jewish uh, uh, from uh, austria and he went to the the saudi arabia he learned arabic he translated the, the quran into english it means it's possible and now even you when you speak english you can get a good translation in english with deep understanding so you can't you can't today say i don't know arabic it means i don't understand islam this is out of your laziness it's not out of the means that you don't have you have the means do you have the time do you have the commitment to change your life because at the end it's changing your life so this is also something which is a personal very important i'm not here to try to blame the authority or institutions the question is not to blame the question is to call for responsibility it's if do you care about your heart do you care about your mind it means do you care about understanding that's the very essence of everything today and especially today and especially and especially for you you are no longer an island which is disconnected from the world the world is in uh, Maldives everything is there the American culture the world culture everything is there so now tell me when we say it's about understanding it's about love it's about having this heart to love god and and to be able to follow the prophet ﷺ, understanding that the prophet ﷺ, we follow him not by doing the way he was doing but understanding what he was doing and trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophet ﷺ. this is what we we are talking about now in in this society you can start and think you know what we are going to have good muslims with two things to impose and to punish no islam is about to understand and to love not to impose and to punish you don't educate people only through punishment you educate people through education you 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 educate you 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 change a society in the way you put light on the way not by being obsessed by the limits and say you know what if you don't do this i'm going to punish you we are translating Islam into a religion of punishment, while Islam is the religion of education, understanding, and loving. And we can't. You know, at the end of the day, you can tell your daughter, you can tell your kids, you have to pray, I'm going to punish you if you don't. But tell me something. Let us be clear on that. You think that by imposing praying it's going to do the job? No. You can say you have to pray, but before saying you have to pray, you have to educate as to the meaning of praying. Why do you pray? What are you trying to get with Allah? It's about this. It's really about this. And the Prophet ﷺ, with his companions, it was not about imposing and punishing. It was about understanding, teaching. The Prophet ﷺ took three years to educate 30 people the prophet changed the world in 23 years three years out of these 23 years where we're about educating 30 people 30 so it's just a part of the people here you are much more than if i take 30 people i just spend 30 years to educate meaning these people are going to be solid are going to be the people on whom we can rely it's not a question of number it's a question of understanding so it's a personal responsibility and by traveling to your country and meeting with you once again uh, many people they think oh we come for uh, the lectures because of the number the, the 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 point is to spread the message yes but at the end is a personal responsibility what are you doing to equip yourself with this understanding to be able to educate your children and to have in this country in your islands a way of resisting resisting to what it's a jihad by the way you know you are one of the most difficult thing for you in these islands is the cultural jihad is the way you are colonized with your mind and you, the way you are living by culture that is coming in your living room in your uh, 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 computers through internet through facebook facebook is global 
but it's not only a means, it's a culture. Coca-Cola is not a drink, it's a culture. Get it. Get it. And if you think that to be a good Muslim is just to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before drinking and going on Facebook, good luck. That's not going to work. And if you think that at the end you will say to your children, imposing them to reject or punishing because they use, it's not going to work. Today, the real jihad is to be able to be selective. What is good, you do. What is wrong, you don't. So you have to be selective. Selective with your mind means with an open heart, not with something which is rejection. We are not a community of rejection. We are a community of selective openness. Selective openness. And this is why the hadith, which is a, a hadith which is da'if, but it's, it's completely connected to the very essence of Islam. It's da'if, but the meaning is right. That wisdom is the last property of the Muslim, wherever he or she finds it, he or she takes it. It means selective, that you take whatever, but this you can't. So, from the heart, and, and reflection from the heart means to understand and to love, not to impose and to punish. When it comes to ourselves, which is also quite important, uh, from the heart and reflection from the heart means that as it is in Islam, it's about compassion and forgiveness, not about judgment and condemnation. Compassion and forgiveness, not judgment and punishment or judgment and condemnation. Why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because when we come back to our religion, we understand that the Prophet ﷺ, in the way he was dealing with the companions, he was dealing with the people who were not uh, following completely, or they made mistakes, or they uh, committed sins, he was always full of compassion. Full of compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is to put yourself in the shoes of the other and to try to understand what is happening. The Prophet ﷺ, when the, 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 uh, somebody came and said, you know what, I destroyed my Ramadan because I had uh, uh, a relationship uh, uh, with my wife during uh, Ramadan, during the day. The Prophet ﷺ tried to understand why, where he was coming from. Poor uh, 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 man, very, very uh, uh, difficult life and coming to him and, and, and he was the, the most important thing in the whole story was his personal and social status and the Prophet ﷺ understood this and he forgave him in a way which is even giving him dates when he had to live say okay you did this can you give food to poor people? I'm, I'm poor. I can't say, stay here. He waited for people to come and to give him dates, and he gave the dates to him, say, go and distribute this to the poor people. He said, I'm the poorest guy in, the, in, in my tribe, so, so keep them. He came with a sin, he went back with dates. That's the Prophet. And what does it mean? Um, uh, empathy here, compassion, is to understand from where the people are coming. So you, for example, if you are here today, it's you have a social background that is helping you to understand what I'm saying. I don't think that somebody here is not understanding what I'm saying. Hopefully, you get what I'm saying. Now you have lots of people out there. They don't. Are you going from there to be judgmental, judging them and condemning them? Or are you going out with this compassion, understanding the social life of the people, the social status, how they... And this is why the starting point of Islam was for the Prophet ﷺ to care about the poor. Because the poor in a society are the invisible presence. We don't care about the poor, even we don't give, we just give. They, they don't have a social presence except when we give them something out of charity the quran is saying something else these people around you have the same dignity as yours and if you are sent you are a mercy for the world and you start with the poor 
look at the people who are not seen, not visible. This is the way you are going to change the world. So it starts with this compassion and forgiveness. And forgiveness means it's exactly, you know, when you come to Islam with the formal thing, we judge the people on the formal dimensions. So depending on the way you dress, depending on the way you speak, depending on your social status and the, people, the, the way you are, women and men, we just end up judging on the look of the people. But the Prophet said it. الله لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأجدادكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم So Allah is looking at your heart and He's looking at the way you behave not the way you look and this is something which is have you seen now what we have as Muslims the way we are changing things how is it now that we have ulama they are dressing that we have priests in the Catholic tradition that's not Islamic I'm sorry it's not our religion. Give me one hadith telling, telling us, teaching us that the way as a sheikh you have to dress is something which is a new category. That's not us. That's not our religion. A sheikh is visible out of his knowledge, not the way he dress. The way we have to deal with knowledge is something which is something which is essential in our religion. It has to do with uh, the meaning of things. And, and then we are a community today of appearance and looks, not a community of meaning and the way, the substance of things. Being, being formalistic, literalist, and not understanding the meaning. And who is able to say, if now I say, La ilaha illallah, who are going to, who is able to judge the quality of my faith? Who? Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum So the best among you is the one who has this God consciousness which is the deepest reverential love towards God and no one can see this except him. So how could you judge on appearance and looks? Islam is not about this. The best, the best, the quality of the best, it's invisible to human beings. The only thing that you can say, it's out of your behavior. I can judge your behavior, but at the end, I cannot judge you. As Muslims, we judge the behavior, but we can never give the final judgment on the being. That it's only coming from Allah. Alayka al balagh we are doing exactly the opposite we are coming with the judgment Allah is not saying this just spread the word do what you have to do educate the people and don't judge be compassionate be full of forgiveness Sab'ina Uzra, this is also a hadith da'if, but the meaning is right. Try to look and to look to seek 70 excuses for your brother. 70 excuses, it means 70 in Arabic, Sab'in, is the word that we are using to say, with no limits. Just try to find as many as you can. And if you can't find one, imagine one that can, can save him from your judgment. Our situation today is exactly the opposite. We don't even find one. It's before even thinking about one, we, have, we are judging the people on what we see, which was not following the Prophet Islam is about compassion and forgiveness, not about uh, judgment and punishment. It's not about this. It's not the way. Even, even with, with the people who are coming to look at the story. You know the story, uh, El Ghamidiyya. She was coming, I committed it. I want to be punished. And the Prophet I said, I'm, go, go, four times. Go, I don't want to implement it. She wanted to do. And not only this, she wanted the punishment. She got the punishment after four times. The Prophet, I said to Sam, try to avoid it. And at the end, he prayed on her 
she, he prayed. So, so the forgiveness, and say, now she paid. She paid. She wanted to be uh, uh, punished in order to be purified. Now I pray. What teaching is this? When we today, as formal Muslim, we are losing the meaning and judging on the forms of things. So this is also something that it's practical. This is something that we need. You know, it's very practical. It comes with us every day in our life. If you are a practicing Muslim, you pray what you have to be outside. is full of this compassion towards people, understanding what they are experiencing. It's full of forgiveness. It's if you forgive, the people can, can understand uh, also. Just two last points that I wanted to add to this. Islam also, it's about uh, serving and reforming. And it's not about uh, to be served and to, keep, to kill the people who are not thinking as we are thinking. And what I'm saying serving is exactly the understanding of this verse when Allah SWT is talking about the Prophet saying, You are mercy to the world of, of your service. You come to serve the people. So the Prophet understood from the very beginning that getting with the revelation meaning the light, he had to serve the people. He was at the service of the people. And this is something which is very important. You are in a country, you live in a country where uh, the citizens are Muslims. Now you have people coming to you who are not Muslims. They come as tourists, or they come to work, or they come for whatever, whatever reasons they come. How are you going to serve the people? How are you going to serve the people? And this is where you come and you understand You are the best community set for the people in as much as you promote what is right and you forbid what is wrong and you believe in God. To serve, it's to understand this. That in fact, our visible dimension as Muslims is the way we behave. So, to be witness. We made you a nation of the middle path in order for you to be witness to the truth before people. And this is why in your house, in your homes, with your neighbor, what is important is to serve out of your example. It's not always, you know, in the West, I'm saying to Muslims, stop talking about Muslims, stop pretending, stop, stop uh, uh, asserting the fact that you are Muslim, let the people see that you are Muslims. Speak less about mm, Islam and be more Muslims. Speak less about Islam and be more Muslims. This is the way you are serving the people. Serving your neighbor to the point that the Prophet ﷺ, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لجاره and in another hadith it's لأخيه ما يحبه لنفسه. So you have not completing your face if you don't like for your neighbor what you like for yourself. And then as you have people coming here, we are doing the the, the thing the other way round. We take from their culture and we distort the very essence of our cultures while we should be test you should be witnesses to the people and to give them we take and we don't give we don't give because we speak a lot about islam but we don't have the islamic behavior which is to be witness to the truth before people so we are here to serve so you still have something which is very important in our understanding all the people who are coming to 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 see you the people with whom you are interacting day in day out what do they take from you? What do they take from you? In which way you are useful? So which is the big question, by the way, you Muslims? Are you useful? What do you bring? What are you bringing to the people around you? Are you a gift or are you useless? Are you always talking about Islam but don't, we don't see Islam in your behavior? in your words, or we see them only in your words and not in your behavior, which is very, very dangerous, by the way. And just, just now, in praying Salat al-Ma'rib, I was repeating this verse. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu li ma taqooluna ma la
كبورا مقتا عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلون This was sent first to the companions who said oh, we are going to fight and they didn't Why do you say what you are not going to do? It's a big thing It's a big mistake It's something which is not acceptable to say what you are not going to do Which at the end is this contradiction between what you say and what you do between your principles and the way you behave Islam here is about to serve and you know what is the best service to humanity is for you to behave the right way for the people to see in the way you behave signs of something say why is he why is he behaving that way what is the secret of your behavior this is why we are talking about serving And, and at the same time, you can't do this if you yourself, you are not serving yourself. You know what happened with Hawa and uh, Adam. Allahumma zalamna anfusana. We have been unjust with our own self. So the first that you have to reform is yourself. Jihad and nafs is the first, is what we said. It's serving. Be just with your own self. Give every dimension of your being its right. Your mind, your heart, your body. Take care of your body. Take care of your heart. Take care of your mind. Take care of your family. Take care of the neighbor. Take care of the society. Take care. Of, these are concentric circles and you have to start with yourself. But you have to be useful by serving, by changing this society for, for better. Al-Muslihun means the people who are changing this society for the better. At the end of the day, how did you get the world when you were uh, an adult and as mukallaf? And how are you leaving the world when you are going to die? What have you done? And it's not a question of quantity. You are not here to change the world. You are here as a human being to change yourself and to change the world around you first. And you know what? Changing the world around you is to change the world in a way. In the way we look at it from uh, a spiritual dimension. So as Muslims, we are here to serve and to reform. And that's the essential dimension of us. And not, as we have seen now, some... They want to be served and not to serve. A leader, a alim, a president, whoever. He knows, as I know, that the day of judgment, president or professor, means nothing. Nothing. Do you think that Allah is going to talk to you, say, president? No. Is he going to tell professor, nothing, sheikh, sheikh A? Now that's for us. We like titles. Sheikh, Allama, Doctor, Professor. All this, we like it. But Allah is not going to talk to us like this. So by your name, what have you done? What have you done with yourself and with the world? With yourself and with your family? What have you done? Forget about president. Forget about minister. I'm sorry. <laughs> by the way, for me, you are a brother before being a minister. Minister is formal, but the Iman, the in the Quran, there is no minister and president and sheikh. There, in the mu'minun, ikhwa. And then we come back to Allah, and the question is, what have you done? What is the assessment of your life? Were you on earth to serve or to be served? Did you use your power as the Prophet to serve or the power to impose and to be served? What is the, the assessment? At the end, this is the point. And every one of us should ask himself or herself. This is where am, am I serving humanity? And to serve by the way is not only the Muslims. The hadith is sahih, the best. Khayrukum and fa'ukum linnas. The best among you is the one who is the more useful for humanity. Linnas, not only the Muslimin, not only the believers, everybody on earth, you have to serve, not to be served. So you have to assess your power. And some were smiling and say, huh, he's talking to the president. You can smile. Let us come to you now.
What are you doing in your homes with your wife? Do you serve or are you or do you want to be served? I'm speaking especially to men. Let's come to the Prophet the Prophet was served. He changed the world during the day, but at home he was serving his wife and the family. You got that now? Are you still smiling? So you can smile now. Because this is it. Are you serving your family? Are you serving your daughters and, and your uh, kids and your daughter, your daughters as much as your sons? Because the Prophet himself, the one who is going to educate uh, an orphan, a woman, he will be like this with me, the day of judgment in, in the paradise. Women. And the point is that the Prophet had only girls. And when he was to welcome Khadija, not Khadija, Fatima, radiallahu he was to stood up, to stand up. He was to stand up, to welcome her, to serve. Not to be served. Not coming at home and say, you know what? I'm the man. <laughs> the answer could be, you know what? I'm the woman. And if I am the woman, you also have to serve. Because every one of us has power somewhere. This power should be used to serve. Not to be served. And then also, what is important for us. You hear today what is happening with these people who are saying we are uh, behaving in the name of Islam and killing people. The so-called Islamic State and ISIL and all this. This has nothing to do with the principles of our religion. We are here to reform, not to destroy, not to kill. Killing is it's, it's, it's big in Islam. Killing is big. Killing is big in, in, even in the punishment. This is why I took a very clear position. Our judiciary, our judiciary systems and the re are so difficult today and the situation is so difficult that we have to be very, very cautious with the implementation of punishment and among them the death penalty. I take the decision and I said this in the United States of America as well in Muslim majority country, be careful because if you kill somebody with the slightest is justice, it will come back to you. The day of judgment, you are going to respond to this. So you better suspend out of mercy than to implement with mistakes. You better do that. So this is what I call ta'liq. Ta'liq, it means suspend it for a while. One day, inshallah, if we have a reformed system with justice, we can go. But if there is the slightest distortion into the right of humanity, be careful when you kill. Be careful when you punish. It's better to make a mistake out of uh, mercy than to make a mistake out of in just enforcement of the law. So this is where Islam is all about and we have to think about it. And my last point uh, would say Something that I, I keep on repeating, and it comes a reflection from the heart, which is, you know, that the Prophet ﷺ arriving in Medina said, spread peace, uh, as I repeated. And it's coming from our understanding. In Islam, there is salam, there is this notion of peace. In fact, even when I translate Islam in English now, I don't say it's submission. The word in Arabic doesn't mean submission in English. Submission is not the right word. In, 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 there are three dimensions that are important. Islam is, is, Islam is to surrender, which is not submission. Surrender is with all your mind and all your heart. You, it's, you give yourself. You enter into what the verse is saying. Enter in God's peace with all your heart. It's something which is much deeper than submission. The English word doesn't give the Arabic dimension. Salam, salam, salam at nafs, salam, which is one of the name of Allah, Allahu was salam, yad'u ila dar salam. He's calling you to the dar salam. It's all about this.
And when George W. Bush was saying, after he said what he said about the crusades and he wanted to be nice with Muslims, he said, I know that Islam is a religion of peace. And many Muslims were happy with this. No, Islam is not a religion of peace. Islam is a religion calling for peace. It's not a religion of peace. It's calling for peace. Why am I saying this? Because Islam is dealing with human beings. And as Islam is dealing with human beings, Islam has to deal with the violence of human beings. So Islam is managing violence. It's saying if they are attacking you, they have the right to resist, which is the legitimate defense. It's the, it's, it's, you have, there is a way where because you have to deal with people who are going to exploit. You are going to kill. What is happening today between Palestine and Israel, it's uh, people resisting, and this is the legitimate resistance of the people because this is not acceptable. So in one, uh, you know, Mandela, that was, is becoming an icon everywhere. When you speak about Mandela for, for almost 30 years, was a terrorist. And then he was the icon of peace, but he said something which is essential. And he, you know what is good with him is that he didn't change afterward when he was acknowledged. He kept repeating things, saying, for example, our liberation is nothing if the Palestinians are not free. Which is right. He understood that the logic of what was happening, the apartheid in South Africa was exactly the same of what was happening, even worse. But he said something which is important. The arms of the resistance are chosen by the oppressors. Which is exactly what we find in the Quran, is that they, they, if, they, if they attack you, you have to resist to their attack. So Islam is calling for peace, but it's not a religion, where, a religion of peace in the way we translate this today. It's calling for peace. And calling for peace means with all the means and the conditions to get peace. And the first condition is dignity. The second is freedom. The third is justice. This is why don't speak about peace in a way which is idealistic. No. Justice, uh, peace has conditions. Now come to me. You acknowledge that I have a human dignity? Yes or no? There will be no peace if you don't acknowledge my dignity. Why am I saying this? Because look at what is happening around the world. Now they are spreading destruction and dishumanizing people. You know what is happening in Burma? With people, with people who are the Buddhists, who are not used to kill in such a way. But the whole propaganda is saying these people, the Muslims there, are not human beings, dishumanizing them. Palestinians, when they are killed, one day you hear 10 here, 20 here. It's as if it counts for nothing. When you are dishumanizing people, human beings, you can kill them without having the feeling that you kill human beings. Have you, have you seen some of the videos where the, the settlers are talking about the people who are killed, these young people who are killed? There is one who was, uh, which was on internet when they were just, he was insulting the young guy who was killed as if he was nothing, treating him with bad words. And, 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 and this was recorded, dishumanizing. The first condition of peace, we have the same dignity. The second is freedom. Freedom, it's important. To the point that some scholars were saying, al hurriya qabl al-shari'a. You are not going to follow the Sharia if there is no freedom. So I should be free to express myself, free to speak out, free to, to, to behave in a society. So give me the freedom of a human being. Because no freedom, no peace. I'm going to rebel. I'm going to refuse. Because if there is no dignity and no freedom, it's not possible. So which freedom have you? And you know with freedom what is very important. Freedom is not a, a gift, by the way. Freedom is the responsibility. It's a heavy one. It's so heavy that the angels had to bow to uh, Adam, alayhi salam. This is what we have in the Quran. Why? Because they are not free. While, while they are praising Allah uh, permanently, they are not free. The dignity of the human being is knowledge and freedom because your freedom is It's because you have decided that you are a believer. So this gives you dignity. Part of your dignity is this freedom. So we need this. And then the last one is justice. 
Justice is important. I heard one sheikh recently saying, you know what, we are not going to speak about justice, we are going to be speak about peace. I'm sorry. Nonsense. How are you going to speak about just, uh, peace if you don't speak about justice? Are you going now to go to the Palestinians and say, no, you know what, we are going to speak about peace. You have 2% of the land and that's it. Thank you. So you, you, you were stealing everything and now you come to speak about peace? No, there, are, there is a justice here. So we have to speak about uh, uh, the way it was justice and not as an ideal of, just, uh, of peace, which ha means nothing on the ground. Do you really think today that there is a peace process in Palestine? Do you very really th uh, think that uh, what happened in Syria and now in, uh, in Libya and all this was about peace? This is just uh, 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 unsettling the whole, it's uh, to destabilize the Middle East. Now the people, the, what they need is not only charity, it's dignity, freedom and justice. This is the only way forward to get peace. Whatever the con is the country and even here, it's something which is important. So as Muslims, and this will be my, my conclusion, as Muslims, we really have to deal with this in a way which is uh, essential uh, to avoid this violence. So why am I saying this? Is that when you understand that this is a, a way towards justice, we have to deal with the reasons why there is no peace. And not only, so what are the reasons? What are the, the reasons, for example, in the Middle East for what we are seeing? In your own region, what is, is, see, uh, uh, is uh, 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 happening? This has to do with a deep understanding and not only uh, speaking about uh, uh, ideal words. So reflection from the heart are not reflections that are disconnected from the real, from the rational. It's the opposite. It should be deep, it should be wise, but it should be practical. It's not for one hour, because some, they like to fly for one hour with the heart in a very spiritual way, but very disconnected from the real. Speaking about the heart is speaking about life. It's speaking about the daily life. It's speaking about the relationship you have with Allah, the relationship we have with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your neighbor, with your society. This is it. This is very practical. This is, this is the daily thing. This is to follow the Prophet to, to look at the details of his life when he was crying, when he was serving, when he was teaching, when he was fighting, when he was resisting, when he was spreading, and the way he was also talking. So I would say here that, let me say something, uh, uh, two things as a conclusion. The first, with all what I said, this is to remind you, please, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, never put the secondary thing before the essential teachings of Islam. We need to start with the essential. We need to have the essential and the priority. And it's not. Because in this world, we have people attacking us on the visible and secondary sides or points that you have to make the secondary principle. No, we have to remain faithful to our tradition. It's the heart, the intelligence, the, the way we understand Islam. Stop. If the people are always talking today about Islam and violence, about the heads, uh, Islam and the headscarf, Islam and the hudud, Islam and, uh, and everything that we have, we end up responding to the West and putting these secondary things as if they were the essential. And you know what is the, the, the most powerful means of your enemy? Is to change your priority. The best means of your enemy is to change your priority. To decide for you what is important for them. And you end up responding. So look at the discourse of the Muslims around the world. It's a discourse which is a reactive discourse, a defensive discourse. It's not who we are, no, it's who we are not. We keep on repeating, it's not violence, it's not this, it's not this. Okay, that's fine. What is Islam then? If it's not all this, we have to set the whole frame and we have to set the issue right. So the essential is essential, the secondary is the secondary. And this is important. 
Yes, the, the, the headscarf, for example, is essential in Islam. It's an obligation, a prescription. It's, it's true, but it's not the starting point of Islam. You are not a good Muslim woman only because you wear the headscarf. And you are not a bad Muslim woman because you don't. So you have to start with the essential. Come and tell me where does it fit in the whole Islamic tradition, the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, the way we, we dress as Muslims. It's been a tahsiniyat, like some in a daruriyat. It's an obligation, but not at the first level. So first, tell me how you pray before telling me how you dress. Tell me the meaning of your, your way you pray before telling me the way you dress. And if, alhamdulillah, you pray deep and you dress well, ala barakatillah. But to be judged only by the, 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 the way we dress or the secondary thing, that's wrong. I'm not happy to come to a country and when they say, you know what, in this country the punishment is there. We are good Muslims. No, that's not my point. You can punish as, ever, as much as you want. You tell me how you educate people. Tell me what is your educational system before telling me what is your punishment system. If you are true with Islam, it's the way you, you educate which is important. The essential is education. Now, you punish well, I hope you educate better. Like this, we need much less punishment, by the way. It's, contradict it's, it's, it's a, it's a con uh, contradictory process here. It's uh, an oppositional process that we have in the whole thing. So I would say here that the, the, the most important for us is to keep the essential. The second is education and be patient with my brothers and sisters, with Muslims. It's not easy to be a good Muslim today. Let us be frank. It's very difficult to be a good Muslim today. So if we are patient with our own self, and I always said that, the more you know yourself, the less judgmental you, come, you become with others. The more you know yourself, the less judgmental you know with others. Because you know your own mistakes. You know your own failures. And this is important. And this is what we need to, ha to, to get from our heart and reflection from the, our heart is to learn to serve, to learn to give, to learn to thank, and to learn to judge less, to be less judgmental with our brothers and sisters, and with even you, our brothers and sisters in humanity, because this life is complicated, this life is difficult, we all know that, so I think that when we are close to the essential, we are close to compassion and forgiveness. Wallahu a'lam. وأعلى وأحكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته